Hi. So, uh, good evening. This is the Nelsonville uh, City Planning and Development Committee meeting. Um, I'm Elizabeth Jones. I am the chair um, and joined by Justin Booth and Carla Grant um, from City Council as well. So um, tonight we're just going to call the meeting to order. And the first order of business um, is a presentation by um, citizen and business owner, Mr. Bernie Roll, who's going to talk to us about a new outdoor adventure uh, venture you would like to do in the city. Right. Okay. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the Planning Commission and Elizabeth for inviting me in to talk about uh, this new business that we uh, plan on launching in, in Nelsonville. Uh, we're super excited to have the opportunity to, to grow again in Nelsonville. We've been actively involved since 2013, you know, with some, some other businesses uh, in, in the area. And uh, so when Carter Lumber, as I was explaining, became available, um, we thought it would be a great opportunity to uh, expand our business, bring more tourism in to the community. Um, you know, we've seen a tremendous uh, growth um, in the business over the last seven years. Um, and actually, uh, even despite uh, COVID-19 and uh, having to shut down for a month, you know, we've been able to bounce back and, and recover from that nicely. So uh, we thought, by, move, by opening a business, and I'll talk more about the landscape of the business and the, the ideas that we have uh, for the intended use of, of that location. Uh, we're, we're super excited. I mean, we've already been working on a, on a logo for the business. Uh, that's you know, kind of the front mm -hmm. cover of the page. And I want to know if anybody notices any subtleties in there. I, I do see a subtle star star brick. Yeah, so the, uh, we incorporated, you know, uh, part of the historic aspect of, you know, Nelsonville into our logo. And uh, ironically, when you canoe, kayak, or two down the hocking, there are a lot of bricks uh, along the way, you know, from the old brick manufacturer. I don't know if there's many star bricks available there, but there certainly is Nelsonville Block and some of the other block that they use so you know this is this this is the attended uh, logo for uh, what we're calling adventure pro outdoors and we're, we're considering ourselves experts in outdoor fun and we'll talk a little bit about you know the fun that we already bring to to Nelsonville but what we also intend to, to add as well uh, over time and we expect it to you know happen fairly quickly as well so I've got a, like an 11 page presentation. I'll, I'll go through it pretty quickly. But you know, our business goals is to expand and grow the outdoor business under our parent company, First Choice Property Management. And we really want to develop the tourism business uh, in, in uh, Nelsonville and the surrounding area with the addition of Adventure Pro Outdoors. Uh, and, and we really uh, see it you know, complement, complementing the business that we already have down by the roundabout with, with Murray's Landing. And, you know, with the activity that we're going to be bringing in, we hope more people get to see other businesses that uh, Nelsonville has uh, to offer as well. And eventually we want to become the number one outdoor adventure activity business in Athens County and the surrounding area. We are, believe it or not, the number one cabin rental business in Athens County. And I think we own more bed and breakfast than anyone else in Athens County as well. So, and I think uh, Murray's Landing is rivaling uh, the other two canoeleries in, uh, up in Logan. So uh, we obviously well, want to work with the community and support the community. We want to work with Nelsonville City Council I know uh, Chief Barber and I have already talked about how, you know, we can possibly work together uh, on helping, you know, clean the uh, river up. You know, he, he's got some ideas in mind and how, you know, he can uh, practice, uh, you know, 
uh, fire rescue. Uh, we're going to continue to work with Aston County Visitor Bureau, the Hocking Hills Tourism, Nelsonville Chamber of Commerce, and uh, all the other uh, visitors and guide services that we, we currently work with. So not only do we consider ourselves the experts in outdoor fun, we also consider ourselves experts in, in marketing. Uh, you know, we, we know how the internet works. Uh, we, we know how to develop our own websites. Uh, and we're heavily invested in marketing in the area. So uh, believe it or not, I've already created a Facebook page letting people know that look what's coming. And the, the phone has already started ringing. So about do you have you know hunting supplies or do you offer this um somebody was actually asking about pet supplies which is something that we're planning on carrying as well uh i'm sure everybody knows that we're family owned and operated and we're emotionally invested in, you know in the nelson area you know uh, my, my son and daughter-in-law have grant uh, we have two two grandchildren with them uh, my daughter's uh, living here and she's going to high university so we, we don't plan on going anywhere for a long time so we're opening a new business it's gonna uh we're gonna try to occupy the new space you know november 2020 not uh fully launched until probably after the first of the year sometime uh, and we're going to be located at the former carter lumber building and uh, the location is giving new headquarters for Adventure Pro Outdoors, Murray's Landing, and First Choice Cabin Rental. The general store is still going to remain open uh, on Canal Street because we got a lot of you know, traffic that we built up over the years there, and you know, uh, so that's going to still have a couple of part-time employees, you know, running the store. Um, so that'll be still another business in the area that we intend on. Uh, keeping open and feel free to stop and ask questions along the way uh, as you're thinking about it so uh, if you look at the, the next slide and uh, you can see I just took this uh, from uh, uh, hunt on X just to kind of show the layout of uh, Carter's if you, if you haven't been there there's like 20,000 square feet of indoor space uh, and we've kind of laid out, I mean, this is not exactly carved in stone because there's just so much area to work with. But if you've been in the, the lumber store, that's going to be Adventure Pro, uh, the store. Uh, and then uh, Murray's Landing, and we'll talk about ATV rentals and got tours. I'll talk about Nelsonville Antiques Mall and Farmer's Market, you know, primitive camping. And then eventually a, a restaurant and a bar, you know, in the uh, warehouse that's, that's next to the store. So there's seven acres, uh, or maybe a little bit more um, than seven acres, with a lot of uh, river access. That's a lot friendlier in terms of getting in and getting out than Murray's Landing, because it's a nice uh, natural grade. And uh, there's a long sandbar that runs across the back of the property. And actually, where you see like the tail of the property crosses over the river, that's uh, when we ran our Mega Two Floats events. Mm -hmm. uh, Hockey College Field is where we uh, used to they co-host the event with them, and that's where uh, folks used to get out from from launching at Murray's Landing. So ideally, it worked out that now they can get out across from uh, uh, Hockey College, but we still plan on working with them. Um, uh, when they uh, for overnight camping and people that want to use RVs and all actually uh, they're they're putting in a, a driving range. Uh, it opened today. Yeah, yeah, it just re yeah, opened and so we'll be helping you know drive people to that as well. Bernie, I have a question. Sure. Uh, will the Nelsonville Antique Mall be Casima or is it going to be antiques? owned by you no it's gonna, uh, I, I we were thinking along the lines of what they do uh combination of the logan antiques mall where people and I, i'll explain more about that uh they'll have like a 12 by 12 space so it is consignment yeah consignment okay. um, and then like the farmer's market down in athens so so that would be what like on saturday you'll have a farmer's uh actually uh uh 
They do it a couple days a week. Uh, I think they do it on Wednesday and a Saturday, Saturday. Wednesday. In, in Athens. But because of you know all the people that we will be bringing in, we can probably offer it so that they could be there on a more regular basis. Okay. Uh, because you know that's just an added attraction for cabin people to kind of look at uh, when people are uh, uh, because people will be coming here to leave uh, for Murray's Landing. And Murray's Landing just becomes a drop-off point, uh, you know, in the future. But it, it'll also uh, be open for uh, primitive camping as well. So the farmers market will also be consignment. So you'll have farmers coming in with their goods and selling those. Right. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, the the primitive camping. Um, can you define what you mean by primitive camping? Uh, primitive camping is basically, uh, you know, we at, at, the, at this point in time, uh, you know, there's no electric or uh, water hookups, uh -huh. you know, like you would go, you know, to a regular campsite. I mean, we, we at here we'll have bathroom facilities that, that and water bodies uh, available because we, we have a bathroom, you know, in, in, in the store. Um, but yeah, and then there'll be slots that are kind of uh, marked off for, for campers that want to camp for their canoeing and kayaking and tourism. When you say restrooms available, do you mean yeah. that they're going to use the restrooms in your office or well, we're probably going to have porta johns for the camp? Uh, well, we, we'll, we, we'll probably start off with, you know, porta johns, but there are uh, public uh, restrooms in the, in the store. But because the, the sewer uh, line goes behind the building, between the other two buildings, you know, we, we could add on additional bathroom facilities and shower facilities. Okay. And that was my next question. Yeah. Um, so during the day when the store is open, you would allow people to use the restroom in the store. But at night, say 2 o'clock in the morning, and you're camping primitively, you want to use the bathroom. Yeah, there's, there's you'll have, porta potties. You'll have porta johns. And then... Uh, will the will there be any shower facilities? There uh, as well? We will we will we will uh, bring a shower facility uh, that will you'll be able to access from outside the building. Okay. Uh, the reason why I'm asking these questions is because that area will require a special flood permit. Uh -huh. So if you're if you're building or bringing anything in, all that stuff will have to be flood proof, and we call it flood proof in the flood zone. Uh -huh. um, electrical anything like that right. um you'll have to apply for a uh, special flood hazard development permit if you're doing any kind of development in the flood area so i just wanted to put that out there um as far as individuals coming in and um, i do know that uh, carter provided me with uh, um, an elevation, huh? elevation, elevation survey correct you know so uh you know the, the foundation of uh carters at the time the elevation was done was about the yeah flood, flood zone. so um any time that you're changing or adding anything in the floodway mm -hmm. you, you'll have to fill out one of these permits it's oh, yeah. required okay. um also your vendors um there's a certain time frame that you do work in the city they would have to be registered as a business owner because they're making money in the city oh, yeah, that's so that's idea. out of my area but i just wanted to put all this stuff out for you so that you know what requirements mm -hmm. um they would have to work with taylor on right. so if you have a consignment for an antique shop and those individuals are in the city selling something for a certain uh, period of time and i'm not sure i hate to misspeak if taylor was here he could tell you how long but scott do you remember is it over a week's period if you're working in the city then you have to register with the auditor's office for your income i don't want to misspeak but i, yeah. I we can make sure we get you there right. yeah we'll We're get you there um yeah seven days a month yeah it's like a week like a week yeah straight I mean, I don't know if, yeah again you know so you um, want to tell your vendors that i mean especially well, we haven't even, uh, yeah. we haven't even put it out there yet yeah. but, uh, so, <laughs> i just want to help you as much as i can to succeed it was a quick 
That seemed like a really a quick win mm -hmm. because that allows us not to have to buy a lot of inventory for the store, but gets people, you know, yeah, smart uh, set up to, you know, do some things. And maybe, you know, obviously we're going into the winter months, so, you know, uh, other than having, you know, cabin rental people, you know, able to look at the stuff, it might just be a Wednesday, Friday, Saturday kind of thing where we know we're going to be the busiest and they're going to benefit the most. Mm -hmm. But they still want to leave their, you know, if they do the in, indoor uh, spacing, then they, they'll probably just leave their stuff there. So I don't know how that changes, you know, whether they're working seven days a week or not. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So uh, that's just the lay of the land. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, we've got more, more to talk about. So uh, the growth plans are to open an, uh, what we're calling an outdoor outfitter store called Adventure Pro Outdoors. Uh, to expand the footprint and the customer base, cater the customers we bring into to Nelsonville. So we have plenty of space to have multiple businesses in one one location. Uh, so you know what what do we plan on you know including in the store uh, where Carter was was currently located? Well, we're going to have a call center uh, for right now. We're, we're operating our, our call center out of you know back room of uh, of the store. Um, and it's just basically, you know, the support staff we have now, but we actually think we're going to need uh, call center people because we are getting a lot more calls with uh, the on online reservation system we have. So uh, we'll have a couple people uh, working there. Uh, we want to uh, carry outdoor gear and, and clothing uh, uh, to complement uh, the activities that we're, we're doing, but not necessarily be a direct competition with uh, Rockies, although I'm having you know conversations with Jason as well, so that we're both uh, kind of on the same page. Uh, archery, ammo, bows, and uh, gun supplies, not necessarily guns right now. The canoes, kayaks, and tube supplies, paddles, life jackets, floats, you know, anything kind of you know, water-related, uh, we'll, we'll probably try to figure out what to put in the store. Uh, beverages. Uh, we were thinking of you know, before we build the restaurant and bar out. You know, maybe having a you know a sandwich shop and a coffee shop where we could you know serve people some food uh, while they're you know waiting to go out on the river or waiting for a bus to pick them up. Or Ernie, I have another question. I'm sorry. No, when you fine. say bar, are you going to be serving alcohol? Uh, we, we would like to get a permit. Eventually? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't, uh, we, we haven't applied for that permit because uh, I know you, you can apply for it and get it and hold it, mm -hmm. but you have to, you know. Pay for it? Well, you, you, have, you, you have to pay for it, but you also have to make progress on, uh, sure. you know, the, the area that you're going to be using it for. Yeah. So. One more question on the camping. I just want to let everyone know in the room that currently we and i would like to work with you because th these are all good plans so currently the code office and the planning commission is working on camping regulations so mm -hmm. right now there's no regulations currently in our city on camping mm -hmm. and um in, in your area however it's a special flood area so you'll be working with me on on your even your primitive camping mm -hmm. for the flood hazard area development permit mm -hmm. so we have been discussing camping regulations i would like to invite you to those meetings so sure. that we can put together a fair uh code that helps benefit your business and also helps benefit the citizens for individuals that may be just camping because they're homeless and i and i think that you know and we're I'm a progressive person that looks to the future of Nelsonville. So mm -hmm. 10 years down the road, are we going to sell what we have here in our great city? And that is the resources of, you know, like what exactly what your business is, outdoor fun. Mm -hmm. And so what we what our idea was was to put regulations on camping. We would like individuals that will, this will affect to come to the meetings and give us some ideas. And we want people to come to the meetings that live in homes next to individuals that have tents where the homeless are living in them. So we want everyone's perspective, but we definitely want 
uh, your perspective being a business and right, so. this is about you. To me, those are like kind of two separate things, right? Like what, what this would be, would be one or two overnights. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, um, this is, not yeah. someone coming in. So I guess with the, yeah, with, the bay, with the mountain bike trail, you could have somebody who comes and they want to camp for, you know, five days or whatever, but not someone who's going to be long term yeah, camping. Well, I think we can, we can, it can be simple how we do our zoning or how we do our code and it can be in the zoning section of our mm -hmm. zoning code for camping and it could also be, I mean, so it could be a zoning thing or it could be here's what you do, here's what you can't do type thing. Mm -hmm. But I think it could be super simple and there's a really good idea and we've got some ideas working around in the committee, but we would like to invite people for their, mm -hmm. for their input. It's going to affect you, so we want yeah. in there. Right. I, yeah. I just wanted to mention that. Uh, no, no, I mean, right now we, we plan on primitive camping, but, you know, I mean, the benefit that Carter's has over Murray's is, um, you know, the sewer that runs through the middle of the property we're at murray's uh i don't know what happened to it um you know that used to be the old um colored dfw and then it got knocked down so i don't know if that had a septic system on it or uh, i think the previous code enforcement officer told me that i would have to connect in down on the far end of my property and bring bring sewer up if i wanted to have sewer water and electric there but then of course uh that property sits a little lower so i'd have to make sure my electric was up high enough that you know wouldn't be an issue but since we have this property i think we're going to really build it out to have water electric and you know some showers then um, we, we could do that because it sits much higher off the left uh so uh, we we feel like, um, you know, in order to kind of support this operation just at the store, you know, we probably would need to add a floor manager, a couple call center employees, and a couple additional maintenance people. And then if we open a deli and a coffee shop, then there would be a couple more people, you know, added there as well. Uh, currently, our staff consists of, like, Myself and my wife, uh, my daughter, and my daughter-in-law for the office staff. Uh, we have uh, an operations manager, a couple of maintenance people, four cleaners, and a couple of emergency landing staff that are uh, part time. And we'll talk about in the end, you know, how how, how much more I think those numbers are going to increase as well. So uh, we talked about Murray's landing. Uh, moving to Adventure Pro to expand the footprint of the canoe and kayak delivery. So right now we we have uh, uh, one, two, three. We have three drop-off uh, points. Uh, Haydenville, the ten mile. Well, it, it's the seven mile, but it's it's currently blocked off because of the log jam up there. But we actually had Wayne National Forest folks stop by because there's been numerous calls, ourselves included. And they're, they're going to remove that log jam, uh, you know, maybe not this year, but next year. Um, so that would be a 10 mile drop off for us. Laurel Run, uh, where D Diners is, and the, the bridge that crosses over, is our, currently our five mile drop off. That'll be our eight mile drop off. But we do have Hockey County commissioners sign off on using that as a drop off as well. And on Route 278, uh, that's our three mile where we mostly drop tubes off will now be our six mile and Murray's Landing will be a three mile drop off and then the Rocky Bridge is somewhere between a half, uh, one and a half to two miles. That could be another drop off that could be a real short adventure for people not wanting to spend three or four hours on the river because most of the other ones, you know, unless the current's moving fast, it takes a couple hours. Uh, well, what do you estimate it takes to go a mile here, a mile on the, um, on the river it's, we we actually if you go on our website we uh, there's two uh, river uh, um, monitors that we look at one in enterprise and one in um, Athens and we average the two and 
uh, we I, ideal conditions are when it's, it's flowing at like uh, four to five hundred cubic feet per second, um, and that'll probably get you on a on a two three miles. You could probably do in two and a half hours. You know, uh, seven hundred cubic feet is like you know the cut cutoff point for for tubes, and that'll move you a little bit faster. Um, and then if it gets over a thousand, we don't even put over seven hundred. We don't put tubes out. Over a thousand, we don't even really put canoes and kayaks out. Although that's still manageable, but you know it's it's the experience level that we're we're concerned mm -hmm. about. Um, and we do spend a lot of our own time and effort, you know, cleaning the river up, um, you know, trying to make it as safe as possible. Believe it or not, you know. When you own a canoe river, people think you actually own the river, and they want it to look like a golf course going <laughs> down there. You know, so I was happy to hear, you know, Nelson Nelsonville would be interested in, you know, helping keep, you know, the Athens section, you know, cleaned up because, uh, and actually that's a section that's, when I've been down in the past, it doesn't have the trees that fall as often as the they do up upriver. So, um, so. You know the old uh, the the Murray's Landing that's up there now. You know we still want to uh, use that as permanent camping, but you know we think that might actually pro provide another opportunity for food, beverage, and outdoor activities for you know people that are floating down the river. Now they have a midpoint where they can stop, get out, relax, um, and uh, have have fun. Uh, and then uh, that far building. On the uh, or the building, uh, the big pole barn building closest to the river, we're calling that building number three. Uh, that's where the new canoe, kayak, and tubing livery will be. And literally, it's so big, just what's under cover on the outside of the building will probably be more than enough to house uh, all the canoes and kayaks. And we, we already have um, 30, to, uh, 30 more kayaks. Actually, it might be 40 kayaks that we have on order with Old Town 15 canoes. So we'll have a total of you know close to 100 canoes and kayaks that we can put out on the river now. And this is this is you know starting out from about 10 10 canoes and kayaks five years ago. So and now we put uh, we put out on some days over 200 tubes you know down the river. Um, so with that being said. We've already, you know, hired additional people just to help at Murray's Landing this year. Uh, but going forward, we, we we definitely see a minimum of one manager, a couple of CDL bus drivers, and a couple of non-CDL bus drivers, and four canoe uh, kayak and two two handlers. So uh, three, seven, seven to ten people on a regular basis down there. How many, for how many people do you, of those do you think would be part-time and how many full-time? Uh, well, the, the manager uh, will probably be full-time because we can, you know, that could be a crossover position. Um, the CDL uh, bus drivers are, are part-time and, you know, one or, one or two of the kayak and, and two gamblers could help with maintenance as well because we've got a lot of maintenance that's going on. Uh, so the other adventure that uh, we think can, we can make happen real quickly is uh, ATV rentals and guided tours. We get tons of calls already from uh, the, the cabin rental uh, folks that we bring in asking if, they, if there are places that rent ATVs. And there's one place up in Logan, but they do it on their own, own property, like 80 acres. You know, we feel like with Wayne National Forest, you know, it's it's unlimited there but we also have to keep keep it realistic so we would do like a two four an eight hour guided tour and we would take folks up the door run uh trailhead and, and start there and do a a couple different guided tours from there uh, and we'll start off with probably eight to ten vehicles uh, we want to try to uh, use side by side because you know we feel that's the safest route to go and so there are uh, uh, ATV companies now that are actually partnering with uh, out outfitters to provide like brand new equipment. Um, so we think that that could be really exciting because now we'll have 
you know, new equipment, and um, so I'm, I'm in, already speaking with a couple of the big ATV vendors. So what, um, would you like put them on a trailer? Is yeah, we would put them on a trailer um, and, and, and tow them up to to the area that we want to do the guided tours. I know that um, uh, city council is talking about making Nelsonville ATV friendly. Uh, but some of them are right, but it's <laughs> it's too long of a commute to get from here all the way up to the North Run Trailhead. So we would just put them on trailers and take them up. So all those side by sides are uh, it's, you can you can get license plates for mm -hmm. them and they would be street legal. Uh, but that's going to be my question: Are you going to do that? Make them street legal? Uh, the plans are not to make them street legal because it wouldn't be economical to okay. yeah. to run them all the way up the door run. I mean, that would take up yeah. almost an hour of the two-hour trip. So we would just probably stage them because we have a property uh, that sits on the door run trailhead. And we also have a couple of properties that sit on Williams uh, connector as well. So we could stage the ATVs there, but we would have people check in and then we would bus them up to the location. Gotcha. So, so uh, again, that that would involve uh, a rental manager and uh, two to four part-time uh, trail guides and a mechanic to work on uh, ATVs. And then uh, we would sell uh, riding gear and supplies at Adventure Pro. And then uh, down the road, I would even like to see us put in kind of like an ATV um, superstore where you can buy ATVs that you know we make various uh, various brands. When you say supplies, what kind of supplies are those? Is it gas, yeah. oil? Is no, 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 no gas or oil. I mean, yeah, yeah, we could probably sell like oils in court jars. Uh, we wouldn't be selling gas. Is uh, there a gas yeah. tank at Carter's? An no. in ground? Okay, yeah. I was just wondering if there was or not. Mm -hmm. I wasn't for sure. Yeah. more like. Okay. Maybe yeah. helmets or protective yeah, gear. Yeah, helmets, protective gear, uh, water bottles, uh, okay. you know, uh, shirts. Yeah. Uh, that would be kind of the main things. Uh, you know, safety equipment. Sure. And then uh, we talked a little bit about the, the Nelsonville Antiques Mall and Farmers Market. This would be 12 by 12 spots for vendors to sell collectibles, the antiques, and farmer market goods. So right now we've got, you know, just based on 12 foot by uh, 12 foot spots, we have 80 spots available for vendors inside, with additional space outside as well. So we could really make that a, you know, a big draw for people to come into to Nelsonville, and because I know, you know, that stuff, you know, always brings people in. Uh, we have gone up to Logan's Antique Mall multiple times. Been the Athens Farmers Market, uh, and then uh, the other thing we thought about because we've done food vending trucks um, just for one or two days, but I mean we could bring food vending trucks in to sell food at Adventure Pro, you know, on the weekends uh, because we'll have the outdoor space available. As you can see, there's just mm -hmm. All kinds of Spons potential. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to say about a vendor that, that so I just wanted to put this out there for you. Um, we have permits that we sell for vendors that are selling food. So the city requires a permit in order to do that. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on okay. that. So uh, well, do they come here and get it or apply for it? Or they can do it online. Mm -hmm. They can come here and apply for it. And, and what's the what's a vendor permit? It's a call? solicitor's vendor's uh, permit. Uh, you can go on the city web page and you can look that information up under our um, business regulations. I can't like, remember what chapter that you know what is. It costs roughly twenty five. Um, you can uh, buy a solicitor's license for a specific amount of time, mm -hmm. or by the month. Okay. All right. So that's bringing in revenue as well. So yeah, I'm I'm no, putting no, that out there for everyone. You know. No, I mean, yeah, we want to make sure that we're bringing as much outside revenue as possible. Absolutely. Right? Uh, so we talked about the primitive camping. Uh, 
We also thought about an indoor archery range. You know, we know that Hocking College is, uh, you know, that's one of their uh, strengths is archery. Uh, now Civil York, uh, you know, high school student in, they're wearing an archery shirt. Uh, and we've got the space to put an indoor archery range in for locals and, and for enthusiasts outside the area. You know, I know that uh, when, when it's hunting season, especially uh, archery season, you know, we get uh, guests asking us about if, if there's places, you know, where they can target shoot. Uh, then we're ta we talk uh, uh, rock climbing wall, you know, there's kind of another uh, adventure activity. Uh, my daughter would like to do a, a rope course area. Uh, I know uh, Hocking Hills Adventure Fun Center, they claim to have the world's largest uh, rope, rope course. So that might be something that we want to consider. And then uh, miniature golf would be uh, another thing that could fit, fit on there as well. Uh, Restaurant, sports bar, uh, there's like 4,000 square feet of buildable space. Well, it's already built. It would just have to be finished out uh, if we wanted to do something uh, with the restaurants and sports bar, but uh, that's a little bit further down the road. Of course, if that happens, then we would need staff for the restaurant and bar business. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm here, you know, asking for support from from Nelsonville, uh, you know, for a tax abatement for the current location um, to help uh, us grow the business you know, over the next five years. So typically, that's you know the, the make or break uh, time frame. Uh, but I see it as a win-win-win uh, for Nelsonville the community and, and Adventure Pro because I see additional tax revenue dollars for Nelsonville with new new, new employees. That will be hired at our business, uh, 10 to 15 new employees, plus uh, the uh, part-time employees. Uh, you know that will grow. You know over the uh, busiest times of the years. Uh, new employees that would be hired at local businesses that benefit from us bringing in new customer base and, and tourism. Uh, so I, I want to thank everybody for their attention and allowing me to. Explain what we, we so, have in mind. We're welcome to any ideas or thoughts that you guys might what, have. What do you think that tax abatement would be worth over the five years? Have you done any projections? I, I, I'm just looking at, uh, you know, uh, like. Well, typically, the uh, way that tax abatements work is a lot of times they're improvement abatements. So the property right now has a certain valuation. Do you have any idea, like when you do all this, how much is going to increase the value of the current property? Uh, I, that would be hard to speculate. You know, it's going to be. Yeah. I so, mean, I think it's definitely going to, you know, increase the value because you know I think, uh, you know, we took over the building, you know, in a, in a state that needed a lot of upgrading because it's was uh, you know used as a lumber yard and kind of hadn't been mm -hmm. changed in in 20 years so anything that we do to it probably already instantly you know increases the value of the, of the property i i was looking at you know the tax abatement as uh, a way of uh, you know uh, not having to pay property tax over a five-year period which that's easy to calculate because I think it's around twelve thousand. That's what I was wondering what the current yeah. property so tax is. Twelve or fourteen thousand. Yeah, the current rate I looked it up is fourteen thousand a year. Right. My only hesitation on that: you don't pay that tax, our you know our our schools lose out on funding. Um, you know, as we know, the state of Ohio funds schools through property taxes. Right. Um, Generally, the way, um, and we talked to the economic develop the Athens County Economic Development Council, the way that they typically do tax abatements is improvement abatements. So that probably, let's say, fourteen thousand dollars is the um, tax, you know, figure. Now you do improvements, and it raises that, let's say, to twenty thousand dollars a year. Typically, what they do is a percentage abatement over a period of, you know, five or ten years. 
So you only pay, let's say, you know, 50% of the of the increased value for a period of time. You still pay the base value on the property. So I mean, obviously a larger discussion needs to be right. had yeah. about that. Can we get like Rick Watson or somebody? Um, well, uh, I did talk with Rick and he said, um, you know, you, you got to get you know, city council approval and then basically what they decide, then it goes to the auditor who, you know, re will, will reassess it. So obviously I paid less than the assessment value now. So I would first appeal the taxes because I want to start off at the lowest tax base possible. Because sure. I mean, every penny I could save is a penny that I, I can use to kind of build a business. Um, and, and not to make you think that we're anti-business or anything like oh, no, that. No. We just we just want to know. What we're no, no. I mean, I'm just I'm, I'm just trying to be realistic. Sure. Mm -hmm. Because you know, uh, it's the cash flow now that's going to help me. Not you know what I think the business is going to be worth five years from now. Sure. Um, you know, it could it could be three times as much. I don't know. Uh, but I'm going to uh, do my best to to grow it as big as I can. But uh, so the, you know, there's got to be a set from both both parties, right? Is that all the taxes are on that? Fourteen. Yeah. That's a lot of tax. Yeah. I guess yeah. I just make property. Think it I think, was, you know, yeah, for as big as it is, it's a big property more than that actually. You must have a huge yeah. tax building. Mm -hmm. No, no, sure. Yeah. yeah. They do. The buildings and that it's commercial. Um, well, I mean, you'd be surprised at some of the taxes that folks. Commercial. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It was hey, the city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, a lot of it's space. It's just space. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, six, oh, the only un, the only finished space is about six thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. The rest of it's all like warehousing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so you know, unless I do something with it, it can't. You know, it can't be used as a lumber company going forward. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's you know part of the agreement. Oh, and not compete. Yeah. yeah, right. For a long time. Yeah. But I wasn't planning on getting the lumber. Do better with what you're doing. Right. If, if that was the case, they would have stayed. <laughs> exactly. So, okay. Well, um, thank you. I think this yeah. is great. I think we'll share it with the rest of City Council. Right. And um, you know. Well, I mean, we we've already got uh, wheels in motion. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I'm one of these guys was. Once I start moving forward in a direction, I you know I, I like to move fast. So you know. Well, we'll probably have Taylor can, work us up some yeah some you numbers. Can, you know, do something as well. That way, I can kind of budget in. You know what? Mm -hmm. You know what my. Well, I think the the way the process works is even if it was something that City Council was interested in doing, it's like we don't make the decision. That that decision is actually made at the county level. Mm -hmm. Abatement issues that that does not rest with us. Oh, so we, we just can recommend, recommend it, it, whatever, but then it goes to the county commissioners ultimately, and the county commissioners are the ones who mm -hmm. decide okay. oh, about right. that. It's, it's not done at the city yeah. level. Yeah. All right. yeah. So well, I have done research on it. Well, I, it I, like, yeah. I have. <laughs> so, I'm yeah. excited. Don't tell you. I like to research things. <laughs> well, we're super excited. I mean, it's not going to slow us down, but you know, it certainly will help uh, because. Like I said, we're already invested in Alcibel and we want to stay invested and we want to, you know, help the community grow. Yeah, no, I think it's great. I mean, I think, you know, like I said, when I actually interviewed for the um, vacant position on city council, one of the things I talked about was that we need to take advantage of what our, um, you know, resources are, and that is outdoor mm -hmm. um, activities here. Right. It's recreation. And that's well, what we I need can tell to... you, uh, since I've been doing the cabin rental business, there are way more you know people doing Airbnb when I first mm -hmm. when I first opened up our first cabin rental business in Carbon Hill. People thought I was out of my mind, mm -hmm. you know. And now, you know, they they build mansion cabins on Downing New Pittsburgh Road. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to think that you know we had something to, to do with that by you know people, you know. 
seeing what you know the star of Hocking Hills has to offer. Mm -hmm. You know, I really want to make Nelsonville the star. Yeah. You know? And with the new uh, mountain biking trail yeah. uh, in Chansey, and oh. as that expands, I mean, that's going to yeah, be. You know what? It goes without saying. We were uh, we were going to be selling mountain but mountain biking okay bikes and stuff in the store as well so we'll have a bike shop okay yeah so that that's going to be and that's just another layer of adding i can't believe i forgot to so here but okay um if i could just yeah. add for the folks at home um mr roll's presentation is the link out here adventure pro outdoor presentation you can uh hop on there and see us, uh exactly what he just presented to all the folks here Great. Thank you for coming, Bernie. Oh, we really no appreciate Thank it. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank we you. will be and, in uh, touch when we have some questions. Know, when, we, and... when we get uh, some more done down there, we're ready mm -hmm. to do some sort of launch. We're going to invite the you know, community in. We've already had people stopping in asking what's going on. So. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, that's, that is. That's great. Uh, okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Yes, you too. Don't hesitate to uh, send us an email or uh, questions or ideas. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Next. Okay. So um, I think good presentation, lots of potential, um, you know, ultimately for the city. Um, so some things we'd have to look into. So the next thing we're going to talk about is um, status of signage compliance along Canal Street, which uh, Ms. Barber has been working on and uh, sending out letters for for that. So can you just give us a brief update on sure. where things stand? And which end of town do you want me to start with? Let's start. I want to start on west? this end. West. All right. Yes, I'm, I'm glad about that. Okay. Tammy's, Tammy's yeah. Country Kitchen, um, the land bank currently owns, there's a sign there. So there's some um, plant that's headed forward with Tammy's country kitchen i'm you mean sorry the old coffee cup the old coffee, the old coffee cup. cup okay i was like the land they don't see me okay uh yeah okay coffee yeah. cup sign okay. right right right, right. i started here I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. on the east end of town but anyway on the west end of town the coffee cup sign um i have been um, I'm aware of that sign. The land bank owns the property, and there's potential individuals that will be bidding on that property okay. soon. And as soon as that happens, I'll be working with those individuals. Uh, they'll notify me. Um, we've got. So is that is it going to auction, or I don't know how that works with the land bank. They they do a bidding process. Do a bidding process. Okay. Well, it's not really a bidding process. They have to send them out. Okay. There's people that. Fill out applications okay. for end users and okay. If you're interested in knowing more about it, no, go on okay. Adams County <laughs> Land Bank okay. yeah. website. Um, I did send Mr. Eugene Edwards a letter for the sign that's located at 1120 Canal Street. Uh, Mr. Edwards did contact me and said he will be using the sign for a new business that will be coming into that location. Okay. And so that is the old pit stop, yep. mm -hmm. which they've, they've now moved the cable company yes. down there. Um, got a hold of Carter Company and they took it down okay. Uh, okay. April 16th. Uh, East State Street Development Company uh, that's located at 486 canal street um contacted them i sent i sent a letter out march 9th and i sent a second letter out may 6th um that is the old car lot and now there's a current barber shop oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that sign has not been dismantled as of yet or changed to the barber shop that's an individual it's east state street development they have not they're at, they're out of compliance um my whole goal is to send one more letter um and just reminding them of kind of summing up the first letter and reminding them um what the penalties are for not taking down the sign um so East State Street Development, the car lot they have not. Jim and Jolinda Edwards, I sent them a letter. They purchased the old BP property at 971 Chestnut. 
Um, the BP sign is still there and currently there is a business, it's a farmer's market type business, but yep. not really a farmer's market, produce Back stand. Tree produce. Yep. Produce stand. Um, I'm under the impression by Mr. Edwards that he's given those individuals a few months to see if the business works out. Um, at that point, if the business works out, they'll work on signage down there. Right now, I let them currently have BP sign up until they figure out what okay. their yep. plans are. And then we have a Pepsi sign located on Canal Street. Sam Setchcar owns that property from Setchcar Company. Uh, he received a letter on March 9th, and then he received another letter on May 6th. He is out of compliance, and I've not heard from him. Okay. So he will receive another letter, and then we will go to the next step, whether it be... Um, uh, it'd be a criminal, it'll be a criminal violation okay. for those individuals. Uh, Mr. Prokos mm -hmm. on 1155 Chestnut Street, it's the old gas station. They have a shell, right? Yeah, okay. they have a gymnastic yes. um, business that moved into the, mm -hmm. the far end. Uh, they completed the work with taking down the sign in July. Okay. And they also covered up the BP sign, or I'm sorry, not BP, the shell, shell sign uh, with paint. Okay. Uh, so they're in compliance. Okay. And then it was brought to my attention by you that there, <laughs> that there, well, multiple people, I've had multiple uh, individuals say, hey, what about this sign over at 633 Chestnut? Mm -hmm. So I did my research on that sign. Um, Mr. Brian Graff owns that property with where the trailer is and then the sign is mm -hmm. kind of facing um, the Canal, Canal yeah. Street and it's advertising rentals. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I looked at that sign to try to figure out what that sign was classified what is classified as and so I did a Google search and it looks like that it's a portable mm -hmm. uh, 48 by 96 inch econo board so basically it's a portable roadside roadside sign mm -hmm. that lights up mm -hmm. so I looked in our definitions of our sign regulations in the city code and I come up with um, a couple things so, one is the regulations on a portable sign in a residential neighborhood may be used without a permit for up to seven days to announce like a birthday party or a special event without the homeowner applying for a permit. The, same, the sign may be lighted between the hours of 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. only. After seven days, a sign must be removed or a permit must be filed. So... Um, we have restrictions for signs like that. Next thing I need to find out is if this owner applied for a sign seven days after he put the sign there. So I got to go back in city record and we don't have records that are cloud based back then. Right. Our records, code enforcement records permit records are cloud-based from 2018 on. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a click of the hand. Sure. It's going to take me a little while okay. to research this property to see if my predecessor allowed him to have this sign. Mm -hmm. I've got to even figure out the whole zoning piece since there's a house, a trailer, right. a trailer, but it's on but canal, it's which is, on canal, which is commercial. Which is commercial. So there's a lot of kind of gray areas. So that's, that's not, not a commercial property. Well, that's another thing I've got to research. So there's a few things that sure. I need to research. No, that's good. That's good. Um, but it is on my radar, and I am working on okay. it. Okay. And then that's it. Okay. Uh, it was brought to me to work on Canal Street signs. Yeah. And once we get Canal Street signs taken care of, then we'll kind of either take the right side of the city or the mm -hmm. left side of the city. And, and, and I think it's good. Or south. Right. I think that one of the things we want is that when people come through town, you know, whether they're going – to the bike path or the hopping college or, or whatever it is that they're doing um that our main corridor looks good um 
and it presents, you know, we have a cohesive look that it doesn't look run down and junky and, you know, cluttered with out of date old business signs that now are apartments. Um, you know, so I applaud you in the work that you've done. And I know that's a lot of work to have to keep contacting people. Yeah. So one of the things I do want to say, and I'll add to that is it just doesn't stop at Canal Street for me because I'm pretty firm, mm -hmm. fair, and consistent with everyone across sure. the board. I am working on Canal, but I will be making yes. my way out because if I'm going to, if I'm going to ask one person to, to take down a business sign, then I'm going to tell, I'm going to ask everyone mm -hmm. in the city to do it. Yes. So, but like, now I agree. like I said, I think that, so I mean, obviously I'm, we're coming and this is our first meeting as a group, um, that this was something that had been on previous planning and development committee um, meeting agendas. And we just kind of wanted to follow up, see where we are to be able to move on. Sure, um, absolutely. I know one of the other things that's been talked about too is also signage, kind of those welcome to Nelsonville signs that they used to exist, you know, that had like the Rotary Club and the Lions Club and the this and the that. Um, and I know that there's been some interest expressed in kind of creating those, you know, kind of welcome signs again, like saying, you know, there's, you know, this thing to go see or that thing to go see. Um, so I think there's something that we need to discuss it in the future, um, what that would look like and where they would go. So. Yeah, I think coming into town from the Columbus side, there's four different sets of signs mm -hmm. in four different locations. You know, some of them are actually kind of hard to see. So yeah, some of them are pretty old. <clears throat> right, get them all together. I think would be a great yeah. idea. And then somebody even suggested, um, you know, uh, doing the star brick coming out of the ground, like uh, like Wanda has. Exactly yes. like Wanda has. I love that. Yeah. So I would like for the city to be on board. If if I am giving code violations for blighted signs that the city also know that we've got some blighted signs on both ends of the town that are pretty old and dilapidated. So I think it's only fair on the east end of town, there's a few old signs, if we could look into that and possibly either restoring, removing, or getting new. Because mm -hmm. uh, I'm firm, fair, and consistent across the board. I think everyone should be on board with this, and I think we should be on board on board with it as well. I think there's someone you can talk I to about that. <laughs> yeah, so. Field trip. Field trip. Not the whole size. Well, <laughs> I think they're like on a fence. Yeah, it's yeah. like a wire. It's, 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 yeah. yeah. There's also some that's erected with the, with the metal pole. Yeah. yeah. You can bring them up to 20. There's no standardization. Yeah. Not yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. They're just sporadic everywhere. Yeah, um, sporadic. Baby steps. So. Something to put a plug into everyone's ear. The at the split coming in from the east end of town, uh, where Chestnut Street and Canal Street split off that monument that's sitting there, it's in really bad shape. Um, I, I personally don't know the history on it. When I was down there the other day, it, was, it looks like whatever plaque was there that talked about it is now missing. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that we want to? Uh, in the future, look to fix, take down. Uh, like to see right. Yeah. About, yeah. I mean, yeah. Research it. Somebody that's near to his property as well. It is. Yeah. It is their property, definitely. So I don't know if that's a city monument or if it's. Is that about the, the canal? Becky, I, I think they decided that that very tip was ours. Whereas the shop talked about that. Yeah. There's like this little triangle. No, I think that was somewhere else. That was up on. Uh, I was thinking it was down there too. Yeah, the, there's a right away or something. There, there's, uh, you know, there's city right away. Oh. However, we don't own the property there's, that that actual monument sits on. It's Procos because I checked in, I looked into it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I just remember talking about it with Chuck before. Yeah. Yeah, that triangle at uh, Scott Street. Yeah. The city actually. Yeah. Doesn't own that whole triangle. It actually, if you look on the plot map, the lots across the street actually continue over into that area the city owns a little triangle at the very far end yeah mm -hmm. like in the very not very much yeah because they discussed that the former council discussed that about possibly giving it or you know because they didn't want to take care of it and i said that's great guys but you don't own it mm -hmm. i don't know if you guys are able to read those comments back there yeah. 
I can't. Uh, I can't see him. Nancy Schaefer threw up there, you know, the gateway to the city. Mm -hmm. Maybe the swimming pool fence would be a great place uh, to advertise. She also uh, mentioned the gateway committee slash uh, bike pet committee can get uh, on those signs. So I will. Uh, Do we have a gateway? Committee? Didn't know we had a gateway. Do we make that something we have? So the gateway. Um, you could just make. <laughs> no, the the gateway. I am drawing a blank. So they got a grant. It was awarded to them uh, prior to me coming in. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's one of those to buy different signage, mainly along the bike trail, if I am speaking correctly. If I get out of turn, uh, Nancy, please throw it up there in the comments and get me back on track, because I have not read it in a while. But they have X amount of dollars to spend uh, for signage and different things, advertising different parts of the city. Uh, I believe one of the things, uh, the last meeting that I sat in, you know, they were talking about a slogan, and uh, if memory serves me correctly, they were just going to go with the star of the Hawking Hills, and uh, that's really about all I can remember without having okay. that in front of me. Maybe we could find out about that. Yeah, sometime. let's see if we can find out about that gateway committee. Okay. All right. Great. Is there more? Maybe. Let me see. Nope. Okay. Um, then the only the last thing that we had on the agenda tonight um, was just to visit quickly. Um, and we talked about this yesterday. The uh, vacant property registration ordinance, um, the fee uh, issue, which planning commission recommended the two hundred and fifty dollars. Fee. Um, the original recommendation was a hundred dollar fee. So city council, we're going to have to reconcile um, where we want to between two fifty and between two fifty and one hundred. Um, Becky's original fee structure was a hundred dollars the first year, doubling the second year to two hundred, doubling the third year to four hundred, doubling the um, fourth year fourth year to eight hundred. Mm -hmm. Um, and to 1600 that sounded good to me the new fee while i i understand the planning commission's um feeling to that the fee needs to be a number that is impactful for vacant property owners so that they move on doing something with their vacant property whether that's restoring rehabbing you know selling whatever it is so that we don't have all these vacant properties um causing blight um, in the city, we're just sitting empty. If it's, if it's something that we could get commercial property in or, or business in, uh, that we need to kind of reconcile that. The, the problem with doing 250, you double it into 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 to, you know, it's. It, and we, we don't want to be anti business. Either. Right. And that's right. right. And, and this isn't just business because it is residential, vacant re residential properties as well. Um, and I think Becky is working on kind of figuring out what that is. I think, I don't want to speak for you, no, if you're more comfortable with the original fee structure you put out, I want to be respectful to planning commission that they recommended that $250 amount. So like I told Becky, one of my hesitations about that 250 amount is will that just cause people to then absolutely not take care of their property because they say, I'm already paying the city $250. They can mow the grass. They can take care of board it up they can deal with you know vagrants that they break in they, they can take care of it because i'm paying so much and so i think we need to find that balance I, i'd be interested in like I, i'm okay with banking structure myself you know okay i, I think that's enough to get people attention yeah. for nelson bill i mean for the have, have we looked at our not to get off subject looked at our fee structures on the the properties we have to go to up people on are we changing those uh they are working on permits, I believe, right now, the committee. Um, they asked for a copy of all permits that were issued for the year 2018, 2019, and 2020, and I sent that over to them because they wanted to see if we, if we, if we issue, how many permits do we issue? How many, you know, rental registration permits do we issue a year? How many uh, contractors registrations do we issue a year and zoning permits so they want to look at how many we're actually issuing a year and that's their first step um, it's a, a, the planning uh, meeting is always the first Tuesday of the month so it never changes first Tuesday of the month if you guys can come that would be awesome 
Um, and then you can put your input on permitting. Is it at six o'clock? Yeah, and we're not talking about fees right now because they felt like they're talking about, I've given them a lot of work. <laughs> and they're like, wait, let's get some stuff done first before we add more. So I think they're not comfortable taking on the, the fees uh, right now. They just want to take on the permits. Um, so we're, we're at that point. Um, it's also live. So first Tuesday of every month, it's on the City Nelsonville um, Facebook page that you guys can view it. And then it's on um, YouTube as well. So it's downloaded on YouTube. Um, my concern was if I had an individual, well, I've been doing more research. So I did ask for all the department heads to give me a budget on how much it would cost for the fire department to go on a on a fire call and the structure, like a structure fire call, uh, structure fire. There you go, structure fire. So I, I did ask Harry to do that. I, uh, I'm sorry, Chief to do that. Um, I asked Chief Fitch to give me a cost analysis of how much it would cost us if he was to go on a burglary charge, uh, someone breaking and entering and maybe doing some damage. It was really hard. It's been hard for us to, to structure that because each call is different depending upon the size of the location or size of the, the property, the location of the property, if it's two story, if it's a single wide, if it's a trailer. So there's all kinds of variables. And so um, if, if an individual takes this case to court, they would want us to show, the judge would want us to show the court Okay, what did you spend on this property that that um, constitutes four thousand dollars a year to take care of it? So that was something that Gary brought up, which was a good point. Um, when I was able to develop the structure for the plan that I had, I had told council that I went to a, a town similar in our size and um, looked at the economic piece of that town and pretty much thought $100, just as they were, would have been um, fair. Um, another thing we're looking into are these properties that are not registered as vacant, but are vacant, are they paying property tax? So right now we found 98 properties in the city as of four o'clock this afternoon that are vacant. Out of those properties that we found that are vacant, about 5% have paid taxes. So those vacant property, property owners have not been paying taxes as well. Um, and we're looking at the time frame that taxes hasn't been paid. So has it been 10 years? Has it been 15 years? We're also going back on data to see if we can find aerial shots of, of these properties to see if, how long they've been vacant. And then we're also doing research on if these vacant properties are deceased, are the are owners are deceased, is the property owners a bank? Is the bank holding the mortgage? You know, so we're doing some research now because we're pretty serious about these almost 100 big properties. We need to get serious, right? Uh -huh. So, I mean, one step is to do the fees. Next step is, you know, so we're doing a lot of research and we're trying to track these people down in the office so that we are prepared for when this takes place, we can get a hold of these folks. It's evident that they're not paying taxes. So we need to figure out what we're going to do as far as penalizing them for not taking care of the vacant properties. And then I'm almost certain we're not going to get paid the hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. So if this is passed and they don't pay the hundred dollars, is it a criminal charge? Is it a civil charge? Do we want to take them all to court together at the municipal court? Kind of like what we're doing with our rental registration fees. We are using it as a group, so it's more cost effective for the city. So do we want to take a hundred people and take them to court and sue them? So there's all kinds of stuff in the background that you guys aren't necessarily aware of that 
I'm working on with with those vacant properties. That's great. Are most oh. of them homes or businesses? we have? I share because um, uh, Miss Jones has been the one person that has been really interested in this. So I've been sharing a lot of my research with her. And I sent her a uh, file today that's got all the properties, and then, um, and we update it daily because we're always working on this. Um, I've got a couple interns in the office, so they're working as well on uh, vacant properties, doing our research. I sent you a copy today, an Excel spreadsheet, and yeah. well, there was what? There were eight commercials. Yeah. Yes, there was there were several the commercials and the rest are residential. Homes, are residential. Yes. And some of those, Becky is already in the process of being they're condemned. Yeah. They're, you know, in the process of, of going through eviction. Eviction and all of that um, as needed. So um, yeah. I have it in the email. I mean, maybe you can yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Anybody that wants a copy of that on council can okay. just Mm -hmm. Feel free to let me know and I'll send you. Yeah. So, I mean, she's done a great job. I mean, you know, it's a lot of work to not only, you know, tag or find the property, but find out who actually owns it, where they actually live, you know. I'm putting a lot of research or yeah. resources into this project. Yeah. So yeah. Meaning project. I'm at my office. It'll be I'm really good in the end, though. It, uh, definitely. It yeah. will help the city. You know, we got code violations that that are coming in more, you know, which will take me away from my desk and then being the secretary mm -hmm. and just trying to juggle everything. It's it's a job. Yeah. Just juggling. You're doing great. Thank you. Thanks, Becky. Yep. Okay. Um any other business? Anybody have anything they wanted to add? Um something that I've started working on. I know it's kind of a sorry. Okay. Kind of a hot button issue in the city. Um and kind of like you mentioned in your your interview, um, tourism is I think our future mm -hmm. for Nelsonville. Uh, one of the things I've started working on have to have ready for the next mm -hmm. meeting. I, just by your comment earlier, I know it sounds like you're totally against against it. It. Yes. yes, yes, I am. Is uh, being <laughs> ATV friendly? I, I think we can mm -hmm. come up with a common sense solution that would work for everyone in town. That would make our town attractive, for people to come and bring their money. Only That's against it being upon the square. Not if you can find another solution. Sure. Just, and, and I don't want to see him going around the public square. But and the way I look at it, it'd be on certain streets, you know, certain mm -hmm. times. We're not allowed to do that. And, that was the whole issue. Well, actually, if you look at the ORC, if we're the presiding authority over the street, we can, oh, we can let him. It wasn't legal to something. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's something to work on. So. Okay. All right. We'll, let, we'll definitely put but that that's, on that's the agenda. That's something we're working on. And I'm, I'm, I strongly support it. So okay. uh, hopefully I can convince you. <laughs> Never on the square. Okay. <laughs> the only other thing I want to say is I, I would like to meet, have us meet again on uh, Wednesday, October 14th at 7. There's quarter. Huh? Oh, no. I'm sorry. That's 14. Yeah, that's, that's, that's two days after. Yeah. It's uh, the day right at the council meeting. You mean the Wednesday? Or the Wednesday after the council Oh, so that is that. Yeah. And is so it every? Our mayor's court's now lasting more than an hour. Okay. So. Are you running it? <laughs> no, but there's more cases. That's <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with yeah. me. Uh, well, it does. But okay. not my mouth. Sorry, Becky. That's okay. <laughs> How about uh, October 7th then? Does that work? That's for you? Yeah. Does that yeah, work? that works for me. Yeah, yeah Wednesday, I was wondering that you, yeah, because you have. Yeah, games the day before, the well, day after. Yeah. That yeah. Works out. So you might as well come here in between. Exactly. I, okay, so I we'll make it. Um, work, so. We'll make it uh, Wednesday, October seventh. Okay. For Elizabeth, right? are you inviting yeah. anyone in? As this, no. uh, right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, like, do we want you to come? Yeah, just let me know. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, we'll definitely let you know yeah. once I get the. After we have at least a city council meeting here for the month, so we'll see what's going on. So, okay, so I think that's it. Um, we're going to adjourn the meeting at eight sixty. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.